Hey guys, Garrett here, and today I want to show you how to operate a trailer mounted tree spade. Mine is a Vermeer TS44A trailer mounted tree spade. So it has a diameter of 44 inches on the outside and it digs 40 inches deep. It is capable of moving trees that are 4 inch caliper and that is measured 6 inches off of the ground. Alright guys, this is the Vermeer TS44A tree spade. And as the name suggests, it's 44 inch root ball is what it does get. But whenever I was buying this machine, I couldn't find anything that told me how to actually run it. So this is for you guys. So let's start up at the controls. As you can see, there are a whole bunch of levers. And thankfully mine has all of the stickers original to it to tell me what all of these need. So if your machine does not have them, this is what it is. All right, so the first two levers, as I have my hands on, is tongue and tongue shift. So the tongue, whenever I pull that, it actually re retracts the whole thing. If I push it, it extends the whole thing out, actually pushing the spade. And then retract. so that you can get, you can really fine tune where you are with your tree. And then tongue shift, that's the second lever. Push that, it goes one way. It's not a huge amount of movement, but sometimes it's just enough to swing that back end right into position. And then right pivot, left pivot, that is, these little guys right here, they open and close the, the outer arms so that you can get around a tree. And then next is four, three, two, one. So that is the, uh, the spades themselves. So the way to remember this is number one is the one that's closest to you. So if I have my hands here, I just look straight over here, that's number one, and then it goes clockwise from there. So one, number two is right over there, number three is up there, and number four is right over there. And then we have raise and tilt, and so this whole thing can raise and then it can tilt like this, and that's what those do. Mine actually has an extra lever that someone added at one point, this one right here, and that is kind of a little jack stand that they made to make it a little bit easier to get these things up and down. So when I bought this machine, it had a, a motorhome engine in it, which is not this particular engine, uh, and it was leaking oil so bad, and it was way underpowered, so I ended up changing it to a Honda GX690, and that's fairly expensive, but it's the heart of your machine. You need the power, and then behind it, you can see there's an adapter right here, and then the pump itself. The pump was fine, so I just kept that pump. And then I had to replace several of the lines within here, as well as a couple of the hydraulic cylinders. I still have this one that leaks pretty good, but I do have a replacement for it, which I'll do someday. And then these things also have big giant tires on them. I ended up having to replace mine. I bought this unit in Iowa and was pulling it back, made it 50 miles and blew one of the tires. So I ended up just replacing both of those tires plus the tubes within them because I live in Kansas, and so that's a 500 mile trip. I did not want to blow any more tires. You can see it does have lights in it. I replaced those with LED lights. And then this little cylinder right here, that is the tongue shift, so it makes the tongue move like this. One thing I definitely want to tell you if you are buying one of these things is they are heavy. They are on a single axle, but don't let that fool you. It's a seven to 8,000 pound machine when fully loaded, so 
you're gonna need a pretty good sized truck. I would not go with anything that is less than a three quarter ton truck. There's a whole bunch of tongue weight on these and without the extra weight of that three quarter ton, I don't know that a half ton could really do it or you might actually start pulling your front wheels off of the ground. The first thing you wanna do before you decide to start moving any trees, and I'm gonna put a tree just right out here, is you wanna call your local one call and figure out where your utilities are. In my case, this was a farm's field and I know exactly where all the utilities are because I put them there. All right, so now I've got it running. The first thing you need to do is retract all of the spades before you lay this down. So just go through one by one, start pulling the levers, and you'll see the spade starts to retract. Do this for all four spades. So you'll notice that there are these teeth right here. Well, the first thing you need to do is push the raise lever and that disengages this guy right here from these teeth. So you wanna raise the whole thing and then start tilting. As you can see, we lowered the whole unit over. It is in the spot where I am going to be placing a tree. So the next step is actually going to be putting these spades in place. But one thing I want you to know is that these guys right here are actually water tanks. So there's two of them. In my case, somebody left both of the caps off of the top of them and therefore birds got inside and made nests. So unfortunately, I don't have any use of these, but hopefully you do. As you can see, they are both piped down to a central valve and then there should be a hose right here that dumps onto this spade and then another hose that goes across and dumps onto that spade right over there. The reason you want the water is it's a lubricant. So if you're going through soil, it actually lubricates the spades so that they can go down into the earth a heck of a lot easier. If you do not have any water, I wouldn't do this. Or if you don't have a spigot or a hose on site, go ahead and bring a five gallon bucket. You can just pour that water onto each individual spade, especially if you have a partner. You can be lowering it as they are pouring the water onto the spade. I get away with a five gallon bucket's worth of water and it works just fine for me. Once you do have your water, you're gonna start, I usually start with number one and then go to two, three, and then four, and I'll work it up and down about three times and I'll usually get it to about halfway sunk into the ground before I work on the next one. So I'll get the next one, it'll go three or four times until it's about halfway down, and then the third, and then the fourth, and then start over again until the number one is three quarters to all the way into the ground, and then just work your way around.
Once you have grabbed your new tree with your tree spade and you're getting ready to put it back into the hole that you made previously, go ahead and follow the exact tracks from when you took out the plug. So you want to back your trailer in exactly where it was when you pulled that plug. And the main reason is the spade is not perfectly round and therefore if you follow your exact tracks, you're going to put it in in the exact shape of when you took out that plug. Therefore, that new tree is gonna fit in that hole a heck of a lot tighter. The tighter the tree fits, the better it is going to root and the less chance that that root ball is going to dry out. After your tree is in place, go ahead and stake it and mulch it and then water it, I would say, at least every other day for the first couple of weeks and then probably twice a week for the first three months. After about a year, you should be able to pull the stakes and the tree should be good to go. I know this machine may look pretty complicated just because there's a zillion hoses going all over the place, but realistically, it's pretty darn simple. And the nice thing is there's only three liquids that you need for this. Engine oil, which of course goes in the engine. Gasoline, which I've got a boat tank here, so I just keep that filled up. And then hydraulic oil, which is right here. You just twist pull that up and make sure that the oil is within the lines and then you do also have a hydraulic filter and i'll be honest i have no idea what part number that is if someone knows what that is put that down in the comments because honestly i'd like to change it and that's it guys it's really not that tough although there is a little bit of feel that goes into it and that's really only something you can get with experience so do a few if you want, just do plugs. Just move plugs around your yard just to get used to the machine and then move on to trees. Obviously, if you have very rocky soil, don't use a tree spade. You're just going to break it. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button as well as subscribe. I'll see you next time.